Hey, Pastor Steve Waltron, I hope you're having a great day in Jesus or night, depending on when you're watching this. We're going to talk about, or evening or morning, we're going to talk about today the difference between the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Apocrypha. I've done some videos recently on like the difference between the Gnostic Bible, the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Apocrypha, you know, what's the... Uh, pseudepigraphal books and the Apocrypha, on and on and so forth. But I just wanted to share some clarification here. Now the Apocrypha, depending on your faith tradition, is going to extend anywhere from like 11 to 17 books. Uh, I think there may even be a possibility of 19 books in the Apocrypha. But like this is the Cambridge Cameo, of which I'm reading the Apocrypha in this right now. And uh, it's going to be set up very much like the original 1611 King James that had the Apocrypha in the middle of the Old and New Testament, but just said Apocrypha at the top and didn't necessarily consider it scripture. As a matter of fact, some of the writings from that particular day show they did not consider it scripture. And so a lot of people, they make some sensationalistic claims. Actually, we just had a viewer... Uh, on our YouTube channel ask did the Illuminati they had heard the Illuminati had the Apocrypha removed from the Bible and I was like no I, you know, I haven't run across anything such as that so this is going to be a certain part of the Apocrypha let me get through here and so oh my pen aha so there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen books of the apocrypha here i don't think like it has psalm 151 and stuff again it depends on whether you're eastern orthodox roman catholic certain types of coptic I think like some of the Coptic churches even say like the book of Enoch is inspired. Done some videos on the book of Enoch and I would not think it's inspired at all. And it's mostly Jewish history between Malachi and um, John the Baptist. And most of it would not be written in Hebrew. It would be written in Greek. There is some accurate history, like 1 Maccabees maybe has a lot of accuracy in it. But most of it is considered apocryphal, which means hidden, and it is not accurate. It has certain doctrines that are not biblical doctrines, and by and large have not been considered scripture by Jewish believers down through, especially, you know, Orthodox type Jews and early Christians did not consider it as well. It's been said Jesus nor the apostles quoted from it. Some have tried to say they actually did. I think in the UBS translational manual it has several quotes. But now I'm going to show you what's in the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls is from what's called the Qumran community and until I really start doing a deep dive into the Dead Sea Scrolls, Thomas Holland in his Crown with Glory has some fantastic information on here. I didn't realize that there's no scholarly unanimity on just who wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls. Where did they come from? Because of course the first discovery in like 1947 by the shepherd boy, a Bedouin, and then uh, 11 caves. There's actually been pretty conclusive evidence by Cooper and others that there were New Testament fragments in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So even some of your major players like Eisner and Shanks, you know, biblical archaeology today and things would say they would have different, they would not say many of the Dead Sea Scrolls were a cynic, that possibly there was a variety of different people who buried scrolls in that region. It only gets about an inch of rain a year, and so it's very well equipped for preservation in those caves, and that some may have been Jewish believers fleeing Titus's legions, Vespasian's legions in 
the destruction and sack of Jerusalem around 70 AD, hiding things there, 68 AD. And they, they would say everything had to be there by 68 AD. Uh, others would say it is a James Christian community and that there's this tension between James and Pauline Christianity and that this would be maybe what later became the Ebionites. Others would say it was some other type of Christian community or that there were multiple Christian groups or excuse me Christian and or Jewish groups that were living in the Qumran area and so that they w didn't all possibly come from the same place I think the earliest uh, fragments like 300 BC a Genesis fragment so that's going to be the difference basically this is going to be a lot of manuals I used to read a lot of the Dead Sea Scrolls I've never read them from cover to cover I've read some though um, the teacher of righteousness is always fascinating me rules for the community some of the eschatological views of a coming king again the teacher of righteousness um, several biblical books there like the Copper Scroll and the Great Isaiah Scroll which is Masoretic text but not everything's that Masoretic text a lot of Paleo Hebrew there a lot of things that are uh, maybe what is uh, you know Aramaic what we call Biblical Hebrew which is really not necessarily Biblical Hebrew it's probably done by Ezra and uh, but like with the Tetragrammaton the name of God done in Paleo Hebrew script so just so many fascinating things but that is the difference between the Apocrypha and the Dead Sea Scrolls and this is a really good addition I've done a review on that but Geza Vermes he's probably if not, he's considered maybe the standard text like when you would read it in college or the penguin classics and that type thing so it's just kind of neat um, reading the books by Eisner Shanks different books uh, you really get a feel but there's all kinds of different theories on where the Dead Sea Scrolls came from so God bless talk with you later just live for Jesus amen